and other labs at Johnson Space Center in collaboration with companies including NVIDIA, we have created a dynamic simulation of the ISS. The interior includes many modules frequented by American astronauts. Here you can see NASA astronauts exercising on the Combined Operational Load-Bearing External Resistance Treadmill, or COBEAR, named after the famous comedian, and the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, or ARED, as you can see there, which uses ambient cabin air pressure to provide resistance for exercise. We believe that wholly immersive virtual environments like this have immense potential, not just for astronaut training, but also for education and outreach activities. Now the physics interactions you see are powered by NVIDIA PhysX. Now we've shown this to real astronauts who have actually been on the space station. And they've been extremely impressed and strongly agree that the quality of interaction and of the contact model are very similar to what it's actually like to be in space. In a scenario like this, it is so important that you make absolutely sure our astronauts truly feel immersed in their training. The fact is, the stress you feel when your life is in danger is far different from the stress of failing a transmission, and that can compromise your ability to react. In human space life, the cost of failure is not just measured in dollars, it is measured in the loss of human life. And that is why we must make every effort to ensure virtual training is indistinguishable from reality. The first steps we have taken using the Unreal Engine and PhysX are definitely in the right direction. Now we also have the ability to interact with workstations. We can use either completely virtual control surfaces, as shown here, where we manipulate a camera outside the space station, or we can create low fidelity mockups to physically manipulate in the real world while we are in VR. Our goal here beyond training is to rapidly prototype different panel layouts, do usability analysis, and help refine the design before producing high fidelity physical mockups. We currently have a very, very simple process to align real-world objects with their virtual counterparts. It's good enough that your natural proprioception, your knowledge of body position in three-dimensional space, is enough to grab an object without being able to see your body. In this case, we align models of handlebars by placing the input device on top of the virtual hardware, and then we place the physical hardware in the same position relative to the controller. This will allow our astronauts to navigate 3D space while in Argos using physical handlebars. Furthermore, using HTC Vive Lighthouse sensors and standard motion controller libraries, we're able to track real world objects. The goal is actually to 3D print inexpensive mockups of tools replicating the weight and feel of the real thing while using a photorealistic render for them inside VR. In this next example, we show a drilling procedure. The user selects from a palette of available virtual tools, including a magnetic screw grabbing rod in his left hand and a drill in his right. He then opens a toolbox, grabs a bolt floating in microgravity, and screws it into the wall. This demonstrates how we can model different hand tools and functions and refine the procedures necessary to conduct work in microgravity, such as increased spatial awareness as your assets may just float away if you're not paying attention. <laughs> Another fundamental capability is multiplayer. Here my colleague and I are practicing passing stowage bags to each other in microgravity and placing them in a storage compartment. We can use a system like this to practice unloading unmanned station resupply vehicles. It also allows for better collaboration within NASA, such as having multiple astronauts trained together in networked hybrid reality across many different labs with their own unique facilities at the same NASA center or at NASA centers across the country. It even opens up the potential for new kinds of outreach. Today, you can watch astronauts work using NASA TV. But imagine what it would be like to spectate astronaut training in real time inside your own VR headset. And that's all extremely easy to do with game engine networking. Now, while we have yet to establish launch plans for such a future, it does show the possibilities of what the future holds for immersive outreach at NASA. Now, the most popular destination on the ISS is definitely the cupola, the front row seat to the Earth. Looking out the window, you can see a very highly detailed ISS model, a docked Soyuz capsule, and a beautiful Earth model created by our friends at OPEG Multimedia. 
When we showed an astronaut who flew pre-cupola this scene, he was ecstatic to finally get to see it for himself. Yet another indication of the immersive photorealism that can be achieved using game engine technology powered by NVIDIA graphics. Now the cupola is where many astronauts observe or assist other astronauts who are conducting a spacewalk or in docking resupply vehicles to the ISS. Here we can observe a robotic arm attaching to a grapple point on an orbital ATK Cygnus resupply vehicle for meeting with an airlock <laughs> via a camera. Of course, using the power of virtual reality, we could just teleport outside and launch it ourselves. Now this is just some of what we hope to achieve for our ISS hybrid reality simulation. If you're interested in a demo of what we just discussed, you can actually drop by the VR Village in the Expo Center and try the system out for yourself. Now let's talk about advanced Argos visualization. Remember when I talked earlier about using Argos to train astronauts in low gravity? Well, it can be used in what we call a shirt sleeve mode, where it is clear they could easily wear a head-mounted display. However, Argos can also be used in pressurized suited subjects. And unfortunately, there isn't enough physical room inside their helmet to wear a head-mounted display at this time. So we need a different solution to visualization in this case. And one approach we're working on is the creation of a reconfigurable cave system called the video wall. Now, a core component of a video wall is a tower which renders its own instance of a scene across 16 high-definition monitors simultaneously using a single NVIDIA Quadro M6000 graphics card. Every 2x2 two two matrix in the tower daisy chains an independent 4K output from the card. Each matrix displays its content next to its neighbors seamlessly using NVIDIA Mosaic technology. The tower's support structure minimizes protrusions in the front, which allows the user to walk right up to it. And by combining multiple towers, each rendering independently and synchronized over a network, the video wall can scale up completely to the size of your working space. The towers can be placed in series like you see here, or they can be placed at angles to one another. And video wall layouts may differ depending on the type of mission or objects in the real world environment, if we say put a rover in the scene uh, in order to maximize immersion for that scenario. And controlled by a master view management system, each tower will compensate for its own position and orientation, and even that of the user's position, by a motion tracking technology, like Lighthouse, to correct its own view frustum. The height and width produces a very convincing virtual window effect. Notice how the field of view increases as the user approaches the screen, and how it decreases as he recedes, and how objects appear fixed relative to the real wall as he moves laterally. And here we've actually placed real CAD models of the towers inside a VR headset, which gives you a true sense of the scale. We project the exact same scenes that will run on the real towers onto the virtual ones shown here. And that will allow us to conduct usability studies on tower placement, again, to maximize immersion and field of view. And we can also write and test the view management system I was previously discussing on the VR headset before a single tower is ever fabricated. And this will allow us to deploy the exact same code to the real system very soon after because they both use the exact same rendering engine. So thus, in addition to improving our crew training capability, we're also using consumer VR to improve the speed and quality of our engineering workflow. And finally, we've recreated the experience of driving an Apollo lunar rover across the surface of the moon. In this example, my colleague is conducting a walk around of the vehicle prior to boarding. And this is kind of like a pilot doing pre-flight checks to identify nominal and off-nominal conditions. Now that we've boarded, we're ready to take it for a spin. Uh, the rover is controlled with a joystick both in the real and the virtual world. And the simulation, like the physics system, is very immersive and presence-inducing. And the landscape was actually generated on a large scale using real NASA height map data from the Apollo 14 landing zone. Now for the control mechanism, we actually took an inexpensive gaming joystick and removed its handle. And then we 3D printed a replica of the original Apollo stick. And this further demonstrates how we can create inexpensive but physically accurate models for use inside of our hybrid reality system. 
Had we wanted to use real world assets only, the stick would have been made of metal and would have been much more expensive. And these assets should look familiar to you because we worked with NVIDIA to import the awesome models of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and the Lunar Module from their Apollo 11 Maxwell demo into our scene. And we're still working closely with them to integrate the latest DreamWorks technologies, including multi-res shading, VR SLI, and VXGI to obtain better performance and graphical fidelity for our astronauts as early as possible. <laughs>